Hi, I'm Tom Salemi from Device Talks. I'm here at 160 Studios. My friends Joe Mullings and Holly Scott of the Mullings Group. Thanks again for having me down uh, in your palatial uh, studio estate. Always great having you. <laughs> so this has been a, it's only August when we're recording this, but I feel like, I, it feels like it's been a long year for MedTech already, both good and bad. A lot has happened. Uh, I just want to kind of take this opportunity to stop, take a breath, uh, and, and get a sense from both of you where you think, how, how you think the year has been for our industry. So Holly, let's start with you. I mean, we've had a lot of news, at least a lot of develops in terms of bounce back from COVID. We had some great FDA approvals. What are some highlights of 2023? And, and I won't put you on the spot by asking you to give it a grade, but what kind of year do you think MedTech's been having so far? Well, I love the question. First of all, good is subjective, right? Yeah. So I look at two sides of this, and and the the reality is it's a it's it's a necessary year. We had to really pull back and 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 scour the marketplace and determine where the value really is. We lost sight of it in in 2020 to 2022. We really did, mm -hmm. and that's where the overvaluations came. That's where overinvestment came. That's where people got confused. Companies lost tech. Uh, look, almost 70% of our, our our startups were all digital based, hmm. right? So it was it was a a huge few years of learned lessons. So this year has proven to help us. I don't want to say right the ship, but at least get us back in clear focus on where the value will be. And we've learned so much over the last few years that I believe the companies that are moving forward, which they have still continued to move forward. Um, are coming with stronger lessons and stronger tactics to do that, and, and stronger sense of organization in in their own or, in their own uh, uh, corporation and in their plans. Um, reality is, if you look at data, it's it's been abysmal, right? Twenty five to thirty percent down on everything: mm -hmm. deals, investment, everything across the board. Uh, I was looking at the numbers. There's there's about twenty five to thirty percent down on invested dollars globally in the medtech industry and life sciences. About same amount on the number of deals done, about the same amount. Even our business is about, you know, about that much down. So it's, the trend is around exactly what we expected as we looked at last year and said, holy cow, this can't be replicated. This can't keep going. Uh, it's the phrase, the tree can't continue to grow up to the sky. It's mm -hmm. just, there's at some point there's got to be a leveling out. So this has been a year of lessening, uh, lessons and, and, and reckoning and getting clear direction on where those those real clear market opportunities are interesting that's a great point joe the the the, the covid and the pandemic had such a deep impact on everybody that i think we all we all tried to adapt and make changes and we thought these changes would be permanent i think the digital health one is is a great point um are are you seeing a, a similar correction in what lessons perhaps are we unlearning from that time, and we won't have to get to work from home or anything like that. We'll, we'll leave that one alone. But in terms of med medical device companies and startups and how business models they pursued, uh, how are we either snapping back to normal or snapping back into the, God forbid, the new normal of where we are? Well, just how's right, you know, things are down 25, 30%, but that's relative to best in class year of 2022. Okay. Right, so we're running right now at like 2020, 2021 numbers. Yeah. So we've just got to make sure we're referencing it against what. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Holly's right. The, the, the new people who entered into MedTech as investors just had no experience and, and drove valuations up, created categories that probably were artificially inflated because of a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. We tend to respond to, consciously or sub subconsciously, what's happening to us at that moment in time. So a lot of that digital money that came in, um, I think, was probably a little ill-educated and, and a little too frothy. Uh, I also thought we lost the focus on the things that matter most, hmm. back to the devices themselves. What I have seen this year is I've mm -hmm. seen a resurgence in investment back into interventional catheter-based technologies and doubling down on investments, uh, whether it's on the, uh, uh, let's call it the structural heart side, uh, whether it's on the, uh, let's call it EP side, uh, I'm, I'm starting to see that reinvestment there. And even surgical robotics, which I still think is very frothy from an investment perspective. You can't have 100 soft tissue robotic companies being developed and expect a home for each of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's worth the bet probably to be into that. But that's also uneducated money in there. Um, so moving forward, uh, I think 2023 
will go down as a galvanization year. You know, tough times make strong people. And so coming out of the, and, and great times make weak people. Uh, and I think that's what we're at, we're, so we're, we're at the convergence of that right now in the industry. Uh, and I also think we have a changing dynamic of where healthcare will be um, provided, mm -hmm. whether it's home, hospital, ASC. And that is going to open up a brand new opportunity slash can of worms slash bad investment, great investment over the next three or four years. So I think 2023 is going to end up being exactly like it is. And, and one last thing, Tom, we're operating in an environment that we did not put the canvas down beyond bad decisions. We're looking at a time where in, uh, interest rates are incredibly high, so therefore investment money gets pulled back. Mm -hmm. All right, we're looking at a time uh, moving into an election year where investors don't like unpredictability. So all of this is just going to be a pause as is, I believe, for the next six, seven, eight months. And then we're going to have clarity. I think public markets open up, which then release money out of private markets. Mm -hmm. I think private equity money is going to be one of the biggest tails that wags the dog of all time in medtech. Mm. And it will be moving into the device side of things with an aggressive approach that we've never seen before, because typically they've played on the periphery and the contract manufacturing world and roll ups in that area. So you're going to start to see PE money come in and eat into where venture no longer has had the courage to go into. So that's where I see going. And I see 2024 second half being maybe on par with as strong as 2022 was, but for different reasons. Final question on 2023. And again, this is August, but do you have a, a sense of what's the big news, the big news item that we'll remember from 2023? Uh, I might. I think Medtronic simplicity might be one that you will hearken back to, good or bad. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. It's the, the the jury's still out. But any single single piece of news that you think is going to be kind of that hook that we hang 2023 on when we look back? Do you have one in particular? No, yeah, I've got intuitive on my mind because I think it's so fascinating. Gary's story and bringing it to where <coughs> it is, and then seeing Dave step in. Um, biggest of the year, though. I, I don't know. I've seen a lot of. A lot of singles and doubles kind of deals more than anything that just carries a ton of weight. Um, in terms of, of the device sector and the return too, I think it's, Joe made a great point that we have seen more investment going back into core devices and not only cardiovascular and I'll include, you know, TAVR, we've seen a lot of investment in that space again, because that market's still, there's so much opportunity in that space. But neurovascular, I'm, I'm really bullish about where brain health is gonna go mm -hmm. in the next few years and, and where we've seen more investment this year and continuing. So I expect that to, to, be, to be big. So I liked this year seeing the continued uh, progress in the neuromod companies. And I like catching the press on the BCI technologies and, and just drilling back to where the, the true applications are. Um, so those, those aspects will, will carry over, and I think they've been a very interesting component this year. I think the, if I had a, I really wanted to think about this, I think the biggest body of work on news that is going to impact medical device is the closure of the China market. Hmm. I think the supply chain was the thread that had the big strategics, the supply chain, really evaluate what investments we made in China. And I think the tension between China and rest of the world, in particular the US, is quietly behind the scenes. And the big strategics won't talk about it because they've got brick and mortar there. And they've got major investments there. But the redundancies being put in place for manufacturing, redundancies being put in place for supply chain, the investment dollars that are no longer coming out of China into the US market, and the existing investments by China, the IP wars going on with China, the lack of trust and transparency with that market, I think in 2023 has been simmering underneath mm. that you may not see a headline on that, but the people who are in this market financially, manufacturing, the top 20 medical device companies, I think that is the biggest story this year and the tensions are going to continue to escalate. So I, I, I believe that instability between these two superpowers are going to be ultimately healthy for medtech. 
But to me, that's the big series of news stories that will end up influencing the trajectory of med tech, manufacturing, and investment over the next few years. Very, very macro issue and a good one too. I hadn't really thought about that as well. So, all right, well, we still have four months or so to go, a quarter more to go in 2023, so lots can happen, but I think that's a great assessment of, of where we are and where we're headed for the next four months. So we wrapped up 2023. Again, we're four months from 2024, but let's have some fun. Let's just, let's just put on our, our big prognostication caps and, and give me some ideas of what you think might be the, the big stories in 2024. I think we'll have some continuation stories. I'm pretty sure AI is not going away. But what, what might be some of the stories that we'll be hearing again and again in 2024? I, I really have to tag on to what Joe said about the China market because I think it's pretty interesting. As much as we've seen so much change, and especially on the startup side, there's been a big shift towards where the manufacturing's going and mm. such. We've also, though, seen an enormous amount of interest and capital from other parts of the APAC region, and we expect that to be a huge segment of growth and opportunity. So that's definitely one of focus for our firm in the next you know, 12 months and beyond. because We expect that to be a, an enormous market. And there's a lot more cross collaboration than there ever have been in, in terms of financing in, in, throughout the region and beyond. But I see R&D returning, um, you know, out of Europe. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, you can look at some fantastic platforms that have come out. We talked earlier about out of, out, of, out of France. So you've got Moon coming out of France, you've got Quantum coming out of France. So who knew such a prolific surgical robotic sort of epicenter of thought coming out of the country of France. So mm -hmm. that's one. You know, you could go back there in the day that, you know, that was a, that Germany and Italy were the epicenter for structural heart and clinical trials. And but with EUMDR, that sort of suffocated all that on the clinical side, but on the product development side. I also love the UK market. Mm -hmm. The UK market over the last three years has become the big the little sister to Israel, the innovation coming out of Israel. Interesting and the innovation coming out of UK are very similar in nature. Heavily digital, um, coming immediately to the US, putting boots on the floor here in the US, and building their organizations here in the US, but ideating the technology out of the UK and Israel. So I really like that a lot. And I also like what's happening right now in the private equity market. I think private equity in 2024 is gonna continue quietly. It's been entering the industry, hand over fist, with now getting into products that may be pre-cleared by FDA in a 510, but PE is now buying up cleared products for revenue, which is what they always do. But now what they wanna do is they wanna load the bag up with those middle category, less complicated, no clinical risk, but still willing to take on the 510, and then load those into the sales bags of their existing sales team. And they're picking up an area that's there's been a void now because venture can't invest in that. They won't invest in it because they can't get the exit of a four, five, six X mm -hmm. on a big investment. But if you look at PE, PE buys revenue and then will hold five to seven years. And I think you're going to start to see EV3 type rollups out of PE on a specific call point, And they're willing to take that risk on the 510K because that's not a heavy clinical risk with the FDA. Start to load that up and create six, seven, eight hundred million dollar medical device sales organizations with middle of the road technology. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. It's just not cutting edge structural heart stuff. And then those will be revenue buys by the large strategics. Because right now there's a gap between all the 510K products out there and how do I get to an exit on it? And how do I get it into the strategics bag that needs it? The strategics aren't developing that stuff. They've stopped developing technology. They've become distribution companies and iterative development. Now, EV3, go back to EV3 a decade and a half ago, give or take, and what did they do? They rolled up three or four solid technologies into a juggernaut to get sold. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna see PE hold on their five to seven year investment window, build up the value, big strategics need it, big strategics wanna be, see uptake and patterns of revenue, boom, that's how you're gonna start. You're gonna start to see that in 2024. Well, these are both great points, and you're, gonna, you're already helping me put together Device Talks Boston, May 1st and 2nd. So thanks for the thoughts on, on 2024. Again, we're a few months removed, but uh, always good of, to get a sense of, of what's coming. And thanks for having me again down to 160 Studios. Great to have you, Tom. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom.